everyone. Welcome to Deep Shikha Bishoi Artworks. My name is Deep Shikha and today we'll be discussing about the basics of human body proportions. The human body is a very complex subject and drawing it well can be really challenging at times. If you do not get the proportions right, it can spoil the entire work. So it is important to understand the basic proportions of the human body like what should be the ratio of the head as compared to the torso or the length of the arms and legs in this video i'll show you some of this some of my sketches of male and female figures and we will discuss the basics of human body so let's have a look now let's talk about the body overall measurements. The use of basic proportions helps demystify the complex machine that is the human body. Drawing the body without understanding the relationships among its parts is like building a house brick by brick without an architectural plan. The primary proportions of the body are height and width. More detailed proportions define the major segments of the body, such as arms and legs. There are also often overlooked proportions that measure the body's interior points, such as the height of the chest and the level of the navel. It is important to establish the primary proportions from the beginning because they affect one another like dominoes. For example, a vertical halfway point that's too high could cause the torso to appear too short and the arms and legs too long. To avoid this, we begin with the larger overall proportions locking the basic framework in place before attacking the details. Now let's have a look on height and proportions, male-female comparison. This entire section will give you a solid foundation for drawing the body. First, however, we'll establish what I call the framework proportions and then work our way down to specific sections of the body, limbs and muscle groups. This approach is also excellent for most types of drawing, progress from the general to the specific. Now let's start with the male height and proportions. To arrive at the correct height, we use the head as a unit of measurement. Therefore, we speak in terms of how many heads tall a figure is rather than using feet and inches. The average person is 7 to 7.5 heads tall. This is somewhat flexible proportion in that half a head more or less won't affect the overall look of the proportions. As you can see in this figure, each unit of measurement is equal to the length of the head on this figure. Now coming to the female height and proportions, the average female is also 7 to 7.5 heads tall. However, her overall height is approximately half a head shorter than that of a man. Using height to convey stature, illustrators often exaggerate the height of a figure to give it a commanding presence or a stylish flair. Rarely though, is the height decreased below 7.5 heads tall as a stylistic choice. You can see an 8 heads tall male figure here. This heroic height is often found in comics and fantasy illustrations. And here's a 9 heads tall female figure. Figures in fashion drawings are typically 9 to 12 heads tall. The point isn't to be realistic but to show long lines which give the image a stylish look. Variations in height. From the examples, you can see that as you shorten the proportions from the average 7.5 heads tall to 7 heads tall, not too much appears to change. However, as you continue down to 6.5 heads and finally to 6 heads, the figure becomes more modest in appearance. Now let's talk about body length. This proportion is more conceptual than it is practical in actual drawing. The arm span equals the overall height of the figure. Notice how long the limbs are in relation to the body. They require a lot of length in order to appear correctly proportioned. The 
halfway point. This is without doubt the most important and useful proportion for drawing the figure. Everything else depends on its correct placement. This major landmark of the body is simple to learn and knowledge of it belongs in your repertoire. Here's the essential axiom to remember. The halfway point of the body is the pubic bone, that is the equivalent of the crotch. Half of the figure is above that point and half is below. In this picture, this line A indicates the halfway point. There is an equivalent amount of length above and below this line. Same goes here. The pubic bone marks the halfway point on the body. The halfway point in the rear view is slightly below the tailbone. Head and body width. Shoulder muscles can be large or small depending on the muscular development of the person. This gives us a little room to be approximate. Nonetheless, the standard proportion is 3 to 1. 3 head widths equal the shoulder width. Note that don't include the ears when you measure the width of the head for proportion purpose. The most reliable way of checking the width of the body is to align the heads side by side. If the heads appear wider than the shoulders, you may have to increase the width of the body. But not always. There are some exceptions as we'll see coming up. Now this three heads rule holds true in the rear view as well. Now let's talk about exceptions to the three heads rule. As you've just seen, the standard for determining body width is that it's three heads wide at the shoulders. But as is the case with many proportions, this is the average. Exceptions to this rule, though not frequent, are not uncommon either. For example, some introverted poses create the appearance that the body is less than three heads wide. And some people, men and women alike, have a slender build which results in their heads taking up a slightly greater fraction on the standard distance. Or, put another way, their bodies are slightly less than three heads wide. Athletes may have wider builds and so on. In addition, sometimes artistic liberties are taken to create a specific look. As we can see in the sketch, the shoulders of someone with a slender build can be less than three heads wide. A shoulder tilt gives the pose a little attitude. An introverted or closed in pose may make the shoulders appear less than three heads wide as you see here. A heroic figure can exceed three heads wide at the shoulders. Posture and proportions. The definition of proportion is the relative sizes of objects or areas and the relationships between them. But there's only one spine. So what are we going to compare it with? We are going to use a vertical guideline as the basis from which to make our observations. Classic good posture is not a perfectly straight back. There's no such thing since the spine is naturally curved. However, we can safely say that good posture does depend on certain points along the body aligning with a vertical guideline. Good posture is where the back of the head, the upper back, the buttocks and the calf muscle are aligned fairly evenly along a vertical plane. Not everyone stands with classic posture but this is the baseline. As we can see here, even in a relaxed standing pose, the figure comes close to adhering to the vertical guideline. Last but not the least, shoulder to hip ratio. The shoulder to hip ratio is key to capturing the differences between male and female figures. This difference in proportion isn't solely due to the fact that the average man's shoulders are wider than the average woman's shoulders. It also comes from the fact that the average man's hips are smaller than his shoulders. The shoulders on women are slightly narrower than their hips. Therefore, the female shoulder to hip ratio is the reverse of the male shoulder to hip ratio. Men's shoulders are wider than their hips, while women's hips are wider than their shoulders. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and share and please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.